Hey, it's Aaron. And today I'm gonna do a shaky cam interior walkthrough in a uh, 2022 Ram 1500. Uh, this one has the eTorque system and uh, it is the uh, backcountry edition, um, which is basically the big horn with a few add-ons. And then there's a lot of other options added onto this truck. Um, we'll look at a Monroney. Uh, later on, uh, but it's basically about $60,000 for this setup uh, in this rig. But mostly I'm going to just focus on the interior. We're going to walk through the front of it. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of little things. Um, they've changed a handful of things, but there's a lot of little things that uh, uh, maybe we haven't seen before um, that are in here. So I want to kind of focus on those. So let's get started. This episode brought to you by Coffee. So over here on the left, you can see here's the big beefy door handle. Down here, here is uh, door locks, windows, window lock there, and then side mirrors up here. Uh, you can, uh, you just push this and move them around. It only does the large mirror. Uh, the smaller mirror is manual. Um, there is an option in one of these somewhere to do it with the... Uh, with this as well, um, but it's not in this one. So over here, you can see the first of the lens bank uh, first of the lens <laughs> First of the vents uh, bacon and email below it and then right here you have the uh, Lighting so you, you can see right now it's on auto over here You can force the headlamps over here is marker lamps everything off and then uh, these are the fog lamps and then this uh, dims them it, it drops the uh, headlight slightly uh, so that you're not right in somebody's face. Over here is the uh, dimmer switch, which controls the uh, the gauge cluster and the infotainment. Down here you have your brake, uh, pull to set, push to release. And over here you have pedal adjustments. So this moves the pedals back and forth um, according to how you're sitting so that you can reach them easier and feel more comfortable. Um, then going straight to the steering wheel, over here on the left side is mostly uh, infotainment stuff, or uh, uh, driver information stuff, I meant to say. I had to touch the buttons to remember. Up here is uh, pick up the phone, hang up the phone, voice activation here, which is pretty okay in this. Uh, it's not the best, it's not terrible. Um, it is slow and clunky like most of these systems. Uh, this system, uh, Uconnect has not gotten to the point where you can just talk to it. But over here, this moves around the driver menus and then this selects things. On the right hand side, you can see a couple of things. Up here is cruise control. Uh, this is standard cruise control. You turn it on here, you set, resume, uh, or set, resume, cancel. And then you can see you can add and subtract to your speed. Uh, if you hold these, it goes by fives. If you just touch them, it goes by ones. Down here is your gearing. This is how you select uh, when you want to manually shift. Uh, especially useful downhill when you're pulling a trailer or something, uh, or getting pushed by one in that case. Uh, but you can set your gears here and force it, so you can force a, you can force uh, to stay in one gear using these. Then notice over here there is no dongle. That's because um, it's still back in the day with the hand shifter, except the hand shifter is not there anymore. Over here you've got uh, your signal turns up and down and then you've got you can clean the front window here you can see the uh, windshield wiper settings here and then back and forth for your bright lights um, just like any other car over here you have a tachometer this is a physical gauge uh, so it doesn't change so you can see the uh, tachometer there you can see the fuel or the engine heat down below it so uh, that's the water heat in the well, the water that you know goes through the radiator. Over here is your speedometer. So you can see the speedometer on the top and you can see right in the middle, there's the uh, connect miles per hour. Down there is fuel. Uh, so that's your fuel gauge over there. And then in the middle, that stays there all the time, the RAM thing, but down below that you can see this is the driver information screen. And then on the very bottom, you've got your odometer and your what gear am I in setting. Uh, and then this arrow thing, I'll show you that in a minute, but that is basically the ride height via the 
airbag system on this, which is an optional update. And then over here you can see your battery gauge, which also doesn't change. And over there is your oil, also doesn't change. So those two stay there. Basically everything down here stays here all the time. This changes. Uh, the outside temperature stays and your compass right here stays, but this stuff changes. So as I page through these, you can see a few things, uh, you know, fuel economy, uh, we can go through trip info. That's not my trip, by the way. Um, here's some settings you can you can fiddle around with. Here's your trailer towing. We, I've got more to talk about with that later. Um, and so forth. You can go through all this stuff and see what what's going on. So there you go. Um, so I'm paging through these going up and down. You can see the indicators on there. Once I get to a screen that has more stuff, I can go right and left. And uh, you'll see that indicator on the uh, right hand side. So I can go through a few things and uh, change stuff. If you get the model like this that has the optional uh, head up display, I would very much uh, recommend that you set it. You'll have to use this system to set it, uh, this menu. So, <coughs> excuse me. So I would recommend that you use this to set it uh, right off the bat uh, because it's, it's hard to see it if you don't have it set for your exact height. Um, important to know. So this does not have seat memory function in it, so you don't have to worry about whether or not that follows it, but in every car I've ever been in, it always does. Now, over here, uh, you got more vents. You can see the push button start. Here's the shifter. Uh, so this is the, let me push the brake. This is the dial you spin around to shift gears. And then here's your uh, drivetrain controls. So you can see I have it in two wheel drive right now. Four wheel auto is sort of like all wheel drive. It basically just kicks in four wheel drive when it needs it and otherwise goes to two wheel drive or rear wheel. And then four wheel high forces four wheel drive. Four wheel low, of course, is low geared four wheel, um, high, uh, whatever. And then this is the neutral switch. So you can put it in neutral and that light will come on. Down here is your engine start stop. You can toggle it so you can tell it yes or no. I, I want you or I don't want you to be happening. Uh, this is your hill descent control, and here you can lock your axles. Uh, so this, this actually I think is just the rear differential, but uh, it locks the axles so that you can, uh, you know, dig out of things better. Now, um, as I recall, this is automatic with four wheel low, but I may be wrong on that. I don't remember. Now let's look at this giant screen over here. Up here you can see you got your lane keeping assist, you got your Duke's lights, got the other camera, oh, the other camera. Uh, and then over here you can see what's on the main screen. So uh, two things to note. One, this is kind of like the main screen, but there are, I've, I've done a factory reset, so this is what it will look like when you first get here. And then from here you can add things. So if you want to add uh, any sort of widgets you can click on that and now you can jump around and put whatever you want on that part of the screen. So if I do that, it now becomes this is what's on the screen and what's been playing. Um, and then you can see your channel presets, etc. There's a lot of stuff you can do with this. You can flip these screens back and forth. Uh, you can put whatever you want down here or up there. Um, it's pretty cool and very flexible system. I really like this. Now, climate controls, you can see them over here and over here. And then you can see, you can control the fans and over here you have your defrost and so on and your back button right there. And um, then auto right here just toggles the automatic. Um, you use that a lot because right now I have it turned off so it doesn't interfere with the microphone, but you can push this and turn it on and then you can turn it off through the comfort screen or climate screen. I'll show you that in a minute. Down here you have a physical volume control, over here is a tuner and so on. You can also jump through some of the menus with this. Now something to remember, if you get the heated seat option up here, you can push these and change that. Now here's the other cool thing, if I turn on the climate, you can see now it's got a temperature set and it's running. I can do this and change the temperature as well. Um, this is a nice little slider so you can just do it by hand like that. Um, pretty cool setup. I really kind of like that. Now to turn it off, which I need to do so it doesn't blow on the thing all the time, you can just do that. Push the comfort button and turn it off. Down here on the some of these screens, you can see there's like apps. Um, 
there's a lot of cool stuff. It's got Alexa uh, integration. Um, you can run through all of these. Most of these can become shortcuts on that front screen. Here you got some vehicle settings. Um, you can go through different uh, settings for different things. Here's off-road settings, right? Here's your controls for uh, mirrors and whatnot. Here's your settings for whatever. And you can just go through this and set stuff. Um, I went through this. I changed a couple of profile things so that, like, uh, when I unlock the doors, it unlocks all the doors and not just one. Uh, that sort of thing. You can customize all of that stuff all through these menus. It's pretty cool and very easy to figure out uh, because everything is just kind of laid out for you on this main menu on the left. Then you've got, if your phone is connecting, you've got this. you got navigation on this particular one, which I think comes with the big screen regardless. And then back to those comfort, um, if you want to change anything or do anything, it all happens in here. Media is, this is what you're playing and what's going on. This is what I, you saw on the front screen. This is just the big version of it. And then, of course, back to that home screen. So I really, I really like this. It works really, really well. So I, uh, it's a nice setup. It's a good job. Now, you saw all of those hard buttons there. They're sort of hard buttons, but they're not. And then I want to talk about some towing. So you, you have your trailer brake control, which is a normal thing. You can adjust the gain and whatnot. And then over here you have tow haul mode. You have your parking radars. Um, we had some ice early this week, and I had to turn off the rear radars because it kept trying to make me break when I was backing up because it was ice on them. So it's just good to know that those are there. Also, if you go through a car wash, you might want to set, you might want to hit both of those. Uh, the traction controls right here. This is for the optional airbag system. It raises and lowers it. So right now you can see it's at the um, second to last, the lowest, uh, second to lowest setting. Um, you can change that just by pushing the button and going up and down, and the vehicle will raise and lower accordingly. Now this, this is your trailer steering system. It's for backing up trailers. So I'm going to show you a couple things. It's not calibrated, and I don't have a trailer on, so I can't actually use it to show you, but I can show you how it works. So the first thing you do is you're in towing mode, right? So you got to turn on tow haul, um, which, there we go. And then you can see the little light comes on, indicates that's on. Now, if I go into reverse, got my foot on the brake. So I got the backup camera. It's ready to go. And then right here, I use this by turning it on. You can see it turns on. And then it'll say it wants to calibrate the trailer. So I don't have a trailer on, so there is no calibration. You have to have a trailer on and plugged in. If you just drive around with that trailer, it will calibrate it automatically if you're in tow mode. So once you've done that, once, you, once the trailer is calibrated, then you can be backing up using those and you can turn this the direction you want the trailer to go. So instead of reversing the wheel, doing it with the steering wheel, you just leave the steering wheel alone, you just run the pedals, and you use this to steer. So if I want the trailer to go right, I turn this to go right, the steering wheel will turn left, and the trailer will go to the right. And you can do it for as long or as short, and you can do it for little things, and then if you leave it in the middle, it straightens the trailer out. Really cool setup. Um, it's, it's a, it's a neat system. Uh, if you've seen the one in Ford, it's very similar to that. Uh, the difference here is that, um, this one is greatly simplified in comparison. So I'm going to put some things back to where they were. I tried to turn that off. There we go. I'm going to put things back to where they were. And there we go. That's that system. It's pretty cool. And as far as I know, it's new. It has, if it was, if it, came out last year um that's when it debuted because i haven't seen it recently now down here you got some usbs so you can see what they are over here you got this sort of useful cubby but mostly useless um, a phone won't fit in there it's not deep enough but it is rubberized so if you do stick something in there it'll stay phone should go here this is a really cool thing you just shove your phone in the rubber holds it in place uh, there's wireless charging on some of these uh, this particular one has it um, some of them don't but you can see the phone indicator. That's where wireless charging is on these. And then you can see this big open space. So let me move my coffee cup and I'll show you what you can do. This thing moves. So you see the drink holders. You can push it back. You can get all this space like that. You can push it all the way forward. Now you have this right here and your drink holders. And then when you look at this giant storage cubby down in there, you can see it's huge and deep. There's a little flip-up thing so that stuff that's in here doesn't slide that way and vice versa. And then this 
slides over the top of it. So this is a totally open all the way through. So if you have something big like a laptop, you could physically get it in there. And then this thing has the top portion where you can store a couple other things and there's another USB. So if you have a dedicated MP3 player or something, you could just leave it in here and not, not worry about it. Then, wow, this is fast and furious. <laughs> Then I just want you to look at the overall dashboard design. You see the proper glove box here, and then you have the lower glove box there, and just a nice square big dash. Uh, very comfortable and very useful. There's little storage things like underneath this that's propping the camera up. There's some. There's a little storage tray that you could throw keys or something in. The seating is really good in this. I like this mixture of cloth and uh, leatherette. Might be real leather, but I don't think so. I think it's leatherette. Um, again, this is more or less right out of the uh, Bighorn setup. Um, the back country adds a couple of like off-road things and, and stuff like that. And then the back seats are huge, huge, enormous back there. Lots of, lots of space. Um, and then another cool thing that was added is this. So you can see regular mirror, camera mirror. I really love those. I use these all the time uh, because you just have a clearer view. And in a truck, if you got a full load of stuff back there, that will let you see through it because you're looking at the camera that's on the very tailgate of the truck, not the camera that's not your eyeballs trying to look through all the junk you got piled in the back on the way to the dump or whatever. Um, also, the uh, uh, it, it allows backing um, without having to look through that, plus just regular traffic use. So you get used to it pretty quick. Just takes a little time. Um, I really like it though. And oh yeah, Monroney. I said we were going to look at a Monroney. Let's do that right now. Looking at the uh, Monroney for this, you can see it's the Bighorn Crew Cab 4x4, and then it has that backcountry update. So uh, you're looking at $45,000 with the base price, give or take. And then you're adding a bunch of stuff. There's a lot of optional equipment. Um, big, uh, big price tag equipment is the technology group stuff and the head up display and whatever, that's about a thousand dollars. Most of that is worth getting. Then you have the backcountry package. So that's the add on to the big horn, which is about $2,700. And that creates these beautiful seatings. Um, badging, some large, uh, uh, some unique wheels. I won't say large wheels, they're unique. And then you have the, uh, you know, just a bunch of little things with the off-road info pages and a bunch of other stuff. The rubber floor mats are totally worth having. Um, and yeah, just really cool. The two-tone paint and whatnot is all included in that. Then you have another 2,500 bucks for the Bighorn Level 2 equipment. Now this is probably stuff you can take or leave. Most of most people, I don't know if you'd want all of this, um, but I do like the uh, added uh, USB ports. The Wi-Fi hotspot's pretty cool. Power outlets are okay; they're useful. Um, Apple CarPlay and so on is already actually included with the infotainment, but this particular package adds um, Park Sense, which is uh, kind of cool. It's useful. Um, that's what was stopping me when I had ice all over the uh, all over the sensors in the back. And then uh, you get some seat adjustment and stuff. But again, that package I think I could take or leave. What I would really want is the UConnect Navigation 12-inch display, which is about two grand. That adds a lot of the same stuff in the technology front, um, and I would. I would totally go with that. That is a really good, I really love this infotainment screen. Totally worth that. And then I skipped over it, but this is the eTorque engine. So you pay $2,300 to get that upgrade. Uh, that just takes a 5.7, adds a mild hybrid setup. The mild hybrid setup gives you slightly better fuel economy. Uh, you can see the, uh, uh, back on that Monroney, you can see the MPGs. It's 22 on the highway. Um, you will easily get that running empty with this uh, engine with the regular 57 without the uh, without the mild hybrid or e-torque setup not so much also the e-torque adds a little more uh, towing capacity i believe and you know so um i would get that 
Because if you want the V8 engine, you might as well get the most efficient of the engines. So totally worth it. Uh, some of the other stuff, take or leave. If you need those towing mirrors, you can go ahead. If you need uh, amplified speakers with a subwoofer, you spend $700. I would totally do that because stereo. Uh, <laughs> so you can see the other stuff that's on here. It's pretty cool. I really do think that this truck is well-priced for what it is. Uh, you saw the bottom line if you added every option that's on this particular truck. Uh, you know, it's around 70000 but I think, or 60, 60000 uh, but honestly, I think that if I were to package this truck with this backcountry edition, which I do kind of like the backcountry up add-ons and upgrades because it, it makes the truck look good. Um, I think that if you were to just do that and a couple of the other upgrades that I want, I could get this truck for around 55000 I think. It would be a little less than 55000 delivered, and I think that would be a great package for this uh, Ram truck. So there you go. That's what I've got. It's a really long one, I know, but there was a lot of stuff to cover. So that's it. This has been Aaron in the 2022 Ram 1500 Bighorn with the Backcountry Package. Talk to you again soon. Subscribe.